In this video we're going to do example 17 to 19. Example 17 find the future value of an investment and 18 to 19 will find the present value of an investment. So let's start with 17 and you know you could probably just do that right away yourself. Find the future value of a 15 year investment of $20,000 at an APR of 3% compounded monthly. Okay, you can do that. How are you going to do it? The only new word there is future value. What does it mean? What do you think it means? Future value simply means when you invest twenty thousand dollars, right? And you it it uh, gains interest. What will the value be after fifteen years? That's it. So all it is is a compounding problem. So please press pause and do the whole thing and then um, check, play, play the video and check your answer. I will do this fast so please press pause now, try it yourself and then um, see if you got the same answer. Okay, Okay. I hope you tried, You press pause and tried it. I'm going to do it now. So we're going to take our twenty thousand dollars and we're going to invest it and of course it's twenty thousand times you know one plus whatever the rate is to the power of t which is number of compoundings right and we just have to figure out what these numbers are going to be well let's see it's compounded monthly so the monthly interest rate is going to be the three percent divided by twelve right um, which of course is 0 0.03 over 12 and you can put that in a calculator and turn it into a decimal if you want to 0 0.0025 and so that's our, our rate R right that's R what's T the number of compoundings So number of compoundings T equals what? So it's 15 years and it's compounded monthly. What's the number of compoundings going to be then? Well 12 per year and 15 years 12 times 15 right? Which is 150 plus 30 right? 10 times 15 150 2 times 15 is 30 so 180 right yep so 180 compounding so that's what T is and this is R and so if we want we can write it like this 20,000 times 1 plus 0 0.0025 to the power of 180 and calculate that okay now press pause and do that if you haven't done it yet and then play the video and watch it just to make sure you got the right answer. Okay, I'm going to do it now. I'm just going to use this basic. Uh oh, oh, oh no. Sorry. Please work. Basic calculator just to show that it can be. Oops. Done. Okay, sorry. Okay, let me just use. Um, this regular one, just like a basic calculator. So the with a basic calculator again, you can you can you can get the inside. You can go one plus that, which is one point zero zero two five, to the and then you've got to do so you do parentheses first, then exponents, and then multiply. So exponent next, find an exponent button, put it to the power of one hundred and eighty, okay, and you get that, and then just multiply that times um, twenty thousand, okay. So it'll do your answer times 20,000. So in any case, we get 31348 point to the nearest cent. What have we got? 63, right? So what is the future value? It's $31,348.63. What does this mean? Explain what your answer means. Uh, it's two 
simple uh, to, to know what to say here really isn't it I mean after 15 years we will have this amount of money <laughs> that's it uh, the investment of twenty thousand dollars will will um, gain interest and become this amount of money in fifteen years time yeah, that's all that's all you gotta say something like that okay okay next present value slightly more interesting what is the present value of an investment that will be worth five thousand dollars at the end of four years assume an APR of four point five percent compounded monthly explain what your answer means okay present value of an investment that will be worth five thousand dollars at the end of four years now there's some language that we haven't seen before huh isn't that interesting so in the previous example we um, you know like this is this is what we started with the twenty thousand and we got all the way to here this is the future value here see that so um, you know we could say that the um, blah, blah, blah. the future value. No, oh, I wish I had more space. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, quickly get the paper. Okay, in the previous example, we could say that this future value, right? This was the future value, right? Equals. Well, it's equal to twenty thousand times uh, 1 plus whatever the rate was to the power of t, the number of compound needs, right? So we could say that this is the future value and that's equal to the present value, isn't it? Times 1 plus the rate to the power of t, right? That makes sense. So you could say that you know, and, and just so you don't have to write words all the time, let's say future value is f. Future value equals present value p times one plus the interest rate to the power of t. Right? Does that make sense? And that's fine. But if we are given the future value, what is and how do we find the present value? Because that's what this is asking. It's saying, what is the present value of an investment that will be worth $5,000? So this is the future value. 5000 is the future value. And we have to find the present value. That's the unknown. So we have the future, we don't have the present. Huh. So we can say, well, the future value is 5000 We've got that. But the present value is unknown. Isn't that weird? Right? So, what can we do? Well, um, I guess we have the interest rate. We can calculate the interest rate. And can we calculate number of compoundings? Four years? Yeah, suppose we can. So, I think you guys might like this as the best strategy. Just kind of plug in everything you know and then calculate. This is going to be 1 plus, then we'll find the rate and put it to the power of t. So all we have to do now is find the rate in t and then calculate that and see what happens. Watch this. So the rate, now it's compounded monthly, right? So the monthly interest rate is going to be 4.5% over 12, right? So 0 0.045 divided by 12, what's that? So that's 0 0.00375. Put, put it in here in the formula, 0 0.00375, okay? And what's T, the number of compoundings? So we want the present value that will be worth that at the end of four years. Okay? And it's compounded how often? So T is the number of compoundings. Remember that? So this is the monthly interest rate. It's basically 0.375%. The number of compoundings is going to be 12 per year. And then there's four years. So that makes 
48. So the number of compoundings goes here, to the power of 48. Now, we're trying to find out what P is. Any idea? How are we going to find P? Well, why don't we go ahead and calculate this thing and turn it into a number? How about that? Let's see what happens. 5,000 equals P times some number. So turn this thing into a number, right? Okay, let's do that. Calculator out. 1 plus that is 1.00375 to the power of what? 48. Press enter. Okay. And we get, and let's write this entire thing out just so we don't make a mistake. Okay, just so we don't make a mistake, let's write this entire thing out. But, uh, uh, make a mistake. I mean, because we're going to have to work with this in a minute. I'll show you why we write it out. I'll show you. Write the whole thing out. 1.1968143777. 1 You'll understand why. Because we're trying to find P, so we have this number equals P times this. How do you find P now? Do you remember any bit of algebra at all? Let me ask you this. If you saw 3x equals 12, how would you find x? You divide by 3, wouldn't you? And you'd say x equals 4, remember that? Well, what if you saw um, 10 equals p times 5? How would you find p? Well, p is multiplied by 5, you divide both sides by 5, remember that? 2 equals p. That makes sense, right? 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5. So what if you see 5,000 equals p times this number? What do you do to get p now? Would you divide by something? What would you divide by? Divide by this big long string, right? The reason I want you to write the whole, and, and of course I'm this is overkill. You don't actually have to write in this step. I know it's long. I'm just trying to make the point that we're dividing both sides by this number, just in case you don't see that. I'm not saying you have to write this out, but if I divide both sides by that number, of course, you know these cross cancel, and on the left, on the right hand side, I just have p, and on the left hand side, it's five thousand divided by this. The reason I'd like you to write the whole number out and keep the whole number and don't round this is because we're going to have to round the answer anyway. Um, but uh, I, I, I don't like rounding before I have the answer because it, you're going to create errors for yourself. I'll show you. If we rounded this to, you know, 1.1, 1 .1, uh, if we went 5,000 divided by and just call that 1.1, 1 .1, you know, um, or 1.20, let's say, it would round to 1.20. So that's 4166.66, okay? That's probably not the most accurate answer. You want to use as much of the numbers as you can while you're calculating, and then round your final answer. You can round your final answer, but it's not going to be to round until you're done with all your calculations. Anyway, so 5,000 divided by 1.1968, one four three seven seven gives me four one seven seven point seven five seven three okay now that's not the same thing as four one six six point six six is it they're not the same right you don't want to round while you're in the middle of calculations so four one seven seven point and round it to the nearest cent well, around this guy, okay, you know what? Let me just write it out. 7573. So that means the present value is approximately what? To the nearest cent. So P equals that. It's, it's 4,000, right? $177 and how many cent? If you round it up, this is a 7, right? So 76 cent, right? Okay. So that's the present value, and the future value was 5,000. 
Uh, what does that mean? It means if you had in fact invested five thousand dollars, and let me just I'll just check this answer for you really quick. And you can always check these yourself if you like. But if you were to check to see if this is right, what it's saying is you take five thousand dollars, you invest it um, for four years. Oh no, sorry. Ah, oh, silly me. You don't take five thousand dollars, do you? You take this amount of money, four one seven seven uh, seven six, or in fact seven five seven three, just to be a little bit more accurate. You uh, invest it at four percent, four point five percent compounded monthly. So times one plus zero point zero four five over twelve. And for how many years? Four years. So that's forty-eight compoundings. Four times twelve, right? So if you plug that in the calculator, this should come out to be five thousand. Is the point, right? Four one seven seven point seven five seven three times one plus point zero four five over twelve to the power of forty-eight. Press enter. And there we go. Five thousand dollars, pretty much, right? Little bit of rounding error by the calculator in this number. So that was five thousand point zero 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 two. But anyway, it's five thousand dollars, right? So that is correct. But that's what it's saying. If you took this amount of money and invested it for four years, you would get five thousand dollars, right? Explain what your answer means. I've just explained it, that's it. If you took $4,177.76 and invested it for four years at 4.5% compounded monthly, you would get $5,000, right? Okay, so let's have a look at example 19. And you might like to try that yourself. By all means, press pause and do it, and it's gonna be just like what we did with example 18. So by all means, press pause and do example 19, which is, what is the present value of an investment that will be worth $10,000 at the end of tr three years? Assume an APR of 4% compounded quarterly. Okay, I hope you've pressed pause and tried it. I'm gonna do it now. The future value we know, or the amount you're gonna get is equal to the present value uh, and a bunch of interest, right? So this is the compound interest formula. Same thing, right? We've seen it over and over. Um, the thing is here though is that it's what is what is the present value? So the present value is unknown. That will be worth 10,000. So this is the future value. So we're given what we what's going to happen in the future we don't know the present okay so if I take this compound interest formula and I say okay the future is 10,000 we don't know the present do we know the interest rate we're assuming an APR of 4% compounded quarterly press pause and figure out what the quarterly interest rate is quarterly interest rate which is our R is what? You got it? It's 4% per quarter. How many quarters in one year? Four, right? So that gives us 1% or 0 0.01 one hundredth. Okay, so 0 0.01 to the power of t. What's the number of compoundings? How many compoundings have we got? What's the number of compoundings? How many years? Three years? How many compoundings each year? It's compounded quarterly. So we got four compoundings per year. We've got three years, so doesn't that make 12 altogether? So to the power of 12. 
Now we have an equation with just one letter missing. What should we do next? Any idea? How about turn this thing into a number and see what you have then, right? Go ahead and calculate that, turn it into a number. So 1 plus that is 1.01, .01. we'll do parentheses first, then we'll do exponents, right? To the power of 12, and we get that big long number, 1.01. .01. Six eight two five oh three, and now we have one ten thousand equals p times that. Now, if you've done a little bit of algebra sometime, you might know how to solve this. How would you get p by itself? If you had twenty equals p times four p would have to be 5, right, because 5 times 4 is 20. To get p by its own, we would divide both sides by 4. Remember that? And we would get 5 equals p, right? So now we have 10,000 equals p times this. How do we get p by itself? Divide by something. Divide by this number. Blah, 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 blah. 1.12 blah, 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 blah. And you got to divide this side by 1.12 blah 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 6.82503 and I won't, won't finish out here but this is supposed to be the same as this and they cross cancel right so 10,000 over this gives what and once again it's good to use all of your digits in the calculation you might have a calculator that will let you type in answer ANS mine has a green ANS down here uh, let me quickly show you. It says ANS down here, and so I press the green button and then I press ANS, this button, and it comes up. So I might want to go 10,000, you see, divided by the answer, which is this previous thing that was in the calculator. So second ANS, and then press enter. And that's a quick way of doing it. So you might have a calculator that'll let you do that. Uh, and um, let's see. So that's what a quicker way or you could just type the whole thing out but in any case you should get 8874.4922 etc equals p so round p to the nearest cent and what have we got eight thousand eight hundred seventy four dollars and 49 cent. Okay, so the present value is this. What does that mean? Explain what that means. Press pause, write something down, or just think of something, or say something out loud, or whatever. How would you explain this in your, in, in, uh, your own words? What does this number mean in relation to the question? You got it? If you invested $8,874.49, you, uh, for three years, at 4% compounded quarterly, you would get $10,000. Okay? If you invested this amount, you would get $10,000 in three years at this percent interest compounded quarterly. Does that make sense? Okay, and of course we can check it really quick. If we take our 8,000, and this is a great thing to do on a test. Can you imagine if you actually remember to do this on a test, wouldn't that be so cool? And you could check your answer and go, oh, I was right. Okay, that would be good. Okay, so it would be great to do this on a test, maybe even once in the homework mightn't be a bad idea either, just for the practice. Take this amount of money, it um, should be worth this amount in three years time with this type of interest. So times one plus, now the interest rate we know is 0 0.01, and how many compoundings? Quarterly for three years, that's 12 compoundings. Go ahead and calculate that. 
8874.49 times 1.01 .01 to the power of 12, press enter, and I'm getting $9,999.99 and then a 7, so if I kind of round that to the nearest cent, I do indeed get $10,000 you round that up, don't you? Because a 7 goes up and then this becomes a 10 and that gives another one here, that becomes a 0 that's another one, another one, another one, another one eventually you have 10,000, right? Okay, so that worked. And the reason I have a little bit of rounding error a the reason it's not exactly 10,000 is because I rounded this number, see? This should be 4922, etc. But I just put in 49. Okay?